Rar. Rar. That was the sound of the dinosaur book that I just read. <laughs> I must say, I wanted her to fuck a dinosaur. Oh my good lord. It, it was called Dinosaur Erotica. Okay. And it was actually pretty banal. It wasn't that crazy. I'm kind of upset about it. <laughs> okay. Never. Like, I just, I don't know. I kind of wanted, like, a shifter situation. This is relevant to nothing. Yeah, but, like, normally in shifter romances, they aren't fucking them in their animal form. No. No. But this wasn't even erotica. I don't know why the author decided to have it in an erotica series. It's just definitely not. It had, like, one sex scene. Um, oh. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, like, a hundred some pages with, like, one sex scene at the end. And it was like she I mean, the author just loves dinosaurs. She was like an ex paleontologist like student. So like she knows her shit. But I don't know the branding. I mean the cover is great. The cover is beautiful. There's another um, romance series that's like dinosaur erotica though. Well there was there was like um Tressera Tops. Someone told me to read that one. It's still in Nut Alley. It was like Tressera oh. Top something. No, I was like thinking the, of something else. The pun. Tressera tops and bottoms. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> I mean, sometimes like the shifter, like or like not even like a shifter, but like the Katie Robert, like the dragon's bra, like that. I mean, that man was like a full dragon, and like yeah, but that I didn't. I wasn't even a huge fan of that book. Oh, I think I was thinking of Wet Hot Allosaurus Summer. Yeah, that that's the author. Okay. Yeah, so that's the same author. So, like, I feel like she'll, her TikTok said that this was a semi-more normal one. And I'm like, I, uh, I respect, uh, kind of, but also I wanted – I mean, he was kind of a dinosaur, but, like, it just would have been great. If you Even if, up- like, he wasn't a dinosaur when they were, like, having – like, if he just turned into a dinosaur at, like, some point. Or, like, did something dinosaurish. Um – if you look up dinosaur romance and then hit images, Uh-oh. I'm just going to tell you right now, there is a fascinating, wow, I mean, books that I, Longbone, Bad Boy Billionaire Dino ex- Exotic Romance, Ooh. not erotic, exotic, taken by the T-Rex. Um, there's a whole Guardian article called Rex Appeal, the Literary Attraction of Dinosaur Erotica. I might, I'm not joking, be going back to read that article. We'll link uh, it. Under the Dunes, a dinosaur love story. This is a badly photoshopped cover with a topless woman wearing she a looks, cowboy hat. She looks there against her will. Um, a billionaire dinosaur forced me gay. <laughs> I don't know how to banter on top of that one. A, a billionaire, I'm gonna, a billionaire dinosaur, okay? A, yeah. A billionaire dinosaur. He's doing well for himself. Forced me gay. Sweet baby Jesus and the grown one too, to quote <laughs> Barbara Howard, because- From Abbott Elementary. My ex is a T-Rex, triceratops and bottoms, as you said, subdued by the Spinosaurus. Dinos are a girl's best friend. Sure mating with the raptor having the dinosaur's baby of course of course taken at the dinosaur museum too sore with love ravaged by the raptors oh Oh my god this dinosaur has boobs (laughs) i'm a big fan of jurassic jane air oh my god Uh, the dinosaur the it's jurassic jane air in a very there's a very bizarre um cover image and underneath the title, it says in quotes, the dinosaur turned me lesbian. Why do dinosaurs keep changing people's sexualities? I don't know. What's this trend? Oh my, there are so many photoshops of Victorian dinosaurs. His last hope baby, the last T-Rex shifter has chosen his mate. Hope it's me. Oh my god, from the same author of the other getting turned to gay by a dinosaur book is gay billionaire dinosaurs in my butt. I was just looking at that one. It sure does say dinosaurs in my butt. Friends, this episode isn't about dinosaur erotica. No, but we're we're bringing back the unhinged, the bonkers, um, go forth and rawr. 
For okay. the record, I've never read any dinosaur erotica. No. Um, I can't say that I never will. I was taken by the cover and taken the by dinosaur, the T Rex, if you will, and the T Rex. Yes, naturally. The pterodactyl. Okay. <laughs> the triceratops. Get, There's a uh, lot of teeth. Going, anyway, going to Tonsil Town with a pterodactyl. Ugh, tonsil, tonsil plays tonsil tennis? hockey. The what? Huh? Tonsil tennis. Ta- tonsil Don't. tennis. It's tonsil hockey. Okay, Miss <laughs> Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> it's tonsil hockey. <laughs> it's tennis. Tennis? Were you fucking like batting it around? Tonsil hockey. <laughs> what? Even the way that you say it. Tonsil hockey. <laughs> yeah, I'm back in Minnesota in there. Pull your ass out of the Midwest. It's tonsil tennis. Um, tonsil no, tennis? What is ton? I've never heard of tonsil tennis. That's the word. <laughs> but it's tonsil hockey. Tonsil hockey's. tennis has an entry in Cambridge Dictionary. I'm just saying it's tonsil hockey. I cannot no, believe it's tonsil tennis. You have the alliteration, but I've never, like, literally, I've never heard tonsil tennis. Well, I've that literally never so heard bad. of tonsil hockey. No, tonsil that- hockey doesn't roll off the tongue the way that tonsil tennis does. I can't. This is okay. This is Bacon Gate 2.0. <laughs> I can't. I was joking on Tuesday's episode about this being our final episode, but this might be our final episode. Tonsilgate. We haven't even even gotten to the episode. I'm heated. Tonsil tennis has the alliterative factor that I need. You only Uh, call it tonsil hockey because you live in a state where hockey is the only thing you have going on. I don't know why. I'm so heated that I'm attacking no. Is this, like, do Texans love tennis? No. I, no. Wh- We're just like the rest of the world and we respect an alliterative phrase. Okay, we, okay, watch. Everyone's going to agree with you and I'm going to be personally victimized and it's going to make me angry, okay? <laughs> but I just got to say, if we have tonsil hockey people, please, for the love of God, email. You'll make my world. And if you're tonsil tennis, and you'll embarrass yourselves in the if, process by if outing you're like, yourself with someone who says tonsil hockey. I mean, I did not know. Like, is who doesn't say tonsil hockey? I am praying for you. Um, we need to get to the point of this episode because we've already spent too much time on dinosaur erotica and tonsil tennis. It's tonsil um, hockey. <laughs> yeah, it's not though. Is the thing. Oh, um, and this is a hill that. Believe it or not, I'm willing to die on. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and mine's a snow hill, apparently. It's yeah. icy. <laughs> yeah, it has to be to say tonsil hockey. The point of the phrase is that you're you're going back and forth. But like in that. hockey, like when you have like face off in hockey, it's like that. But tennis, it's like there's like a lot of space. Hockey, the sticks are crossing. Which sounds like another thing. So that okay. sounds a lot <laughs> closer to sword crossing than it does to kissing. <laughs> <sighs> it's fine okay oh that's Pornhub getting off of that <laughs> <laughs> Pornhub recognizes tonsil hockey I'm sure they recognize tonsil tennis too I'm sure they recognize um, a lot of other phrases that we have never heard of okay we need to get to the point of the episode yeah. welcome to romance your TBR we have a lot of <laughs> opinions about phrases euphemistic phrases for kissing yeah and other things and yeah. also, a lot of dinosaur erotica. <laughs> okay. Um, hopefully, we found a fun and quirky name for this episode that also tells you that we're reading the Halifax <laughs> Sisters series <laughs> by Alexandra Vasti, um, Margot, and Matilda Halifax. Two novellas, free with the author's newsletter. Um, we will link the author's website. And then you can figure out how to get onto the newsletter. It's easy and free. You can do it. We believe in you. We, we so do. We really do. Um, the first one came out sometime in like 2022. And then the second one, Matilda's book, just came out in January. Um, you've probably maybe seen them if you're in the, the romance sphere. They, they're they pretty big. Um, yeah, I first found a post i believe by lydia lloyd romance shout out again 
the best account out there. Um, she had said that it was like free. It was like a virgin hero, like free in a novella. And I was like, oh my God, I need to read it. So immediately got it. And that one is my favorite of the series. Um, I fr- like I reread it and I was like, oh my God. Okay. Yeah, this is perfect. Um, and then Caroline's is the second one. So it, it's. Yeah. It's I think I actually found the first one through that same post. Lloyd romance post. Mm-hmm. I think it was the same thing. Yeah. Um, but I knew, I mean, I loved, I gave both of them five stars. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed them. Um, I love Alexandra's writing style. I'm very, very excited fun. to see, um, like, full books from her. I know. She's... She, I'm picky about novellas, but she she nails the, like, giving me a full satisfying arc with mm-hmm. the limited amount of time. Um, but I will, I mean, five stars, but I knew reading Margot from the mentions of Matilda. I was like, that's my... <laughs> yeah and see like so i think at first i gave the first one four stars because i think i like read it and then i w- was probably like in the midst of reading like a bunch of other things and um so i kind of like read it and it was super like it was good it was cute i was like that's great um and then like i reread it because i was re- reading that before i read matilda's and i was like okay wait no that's five stars this is exactly what i need it's what i want um so like the mood just hit different um the the outdoor scene at the picnic that one oh yeah mm. Mm-mm-mm. yeah it was so good it was so good I and that really that. yeah <laughs> it was so good and so it was honestly there that I was like yeah that's a five star that's a five star read for that scene alone that scene um, especially is fun knowing with having read both of yeah them yeah and, and so I- you get both perspectives on that scene and I will say it really made it interesting to read Matilda's book because you think you know what happens you think you know what's going on from reading the first one and then it, like throws you a curveball because they're actually like um they're pre- are they're, they're like faked an elopement because she's yeah. gonna go be um his sister's art teacher right mm-hmm. um because she was like drawing scandalous etchings of him <laughs> just God, I dick out that. <laughs> and, like she's like what she- it wasn't you <laughs> well because like she she didn't so she was like fantasizing about him but she didn't like draw like everything but then someone who was like printing it realized that like it kind of looked like this was he a duke no whatever he was he was he was scandalous who i don't know he Um, he was just scandalous because everybody thinks he killed his wife i don't remember yeah and the person who was like printing she like sold it to like a magazine or like a newspaper and they like drew on his like his must like his beard and they like drew on i think like his tattoo or something He's a mark. Yeah, the tattoo so on the, his ass. And then he was so another tattoo on another ass. Um <laughs> we've got two nickels. <laughs> this one a less nefarious purpose than the porpoise. And um, also a far less embarrassing tattoo. Yes. What was his? I forget. I think it's Ursa Major. Oh yes, the that was hot. Part. That was hot. Um Rar. <laughs> um so he like comes up to her. He's like, "Why did you put me dick out on this? <laughs> like, like double dicked out on a Tuesday afternoon? Like I why? did in fact lose my mind when he she was like, y- "You're not. I-, I wasn't drawing you. What are you talking about?" And he was like, "Number one, who are you? Number two, how do you know about the tattoo on my ass?" Hi, I'd like I to talk to you about the mind. tattoo on my ass. He um, said, how did you know? So then he like he approaches her at this ball and she's like, oh shit. But she's like, no one can prove this. Like I didn't, like no one should be able to tell. And then she didn't know that they like edited her drawings. And then he was like, oh my God. So then it caused his sister's art um, teacher to flee because he's now doubly scandalous. Um, and so they didn't want to be in proximity with him. And so then she's also, she's like a painter, um, or like an artist and she's like, okay, wait, I can help fix this because whenever a heroine in historical romance fixes something and wants to fix something, it always works out. Of course. Um, so she's like, I will find, um, you a replacement. She has one. He's super old. He can't make the trip. So then she's like, I'll do it. I will go with you and not think about the tattoo on your ass. And and how do we think that went? It went great. It's so good. For her. For him. So for me, most so, importantly. So good. And when I was reading this, I was like, wow. I think Alexandra Vasti like got into Caroline's brain. 
Anna was like, I'm going to so write I'm gonna something. I'm going to write this for Caroline. So Caroline coded. <laughs> because, like, and it's actually quite funny because, like, the first one is so me coded. It is. And this one is so you. Like, if, like, it, it's perfect. It worked out so well. It checked all our boxes. It did. Each of them. I mean, again, I love the first yes. one also. Yes. But and I, I really liked the second book. But, like, but there's I something have, so. I have imprinted on um, a Jacob Black level. <laughs> I just, Margo. like, I remember reading Mar, which I loved Margot. Yeah. Um, and I was like, God, I love a virgin hero. I know you love, are like the <laughs> champion of virgin heroes I love everywhere. It. Um, but there's the scene which we get from the other perspective in this one where Margot pretends to be Matilda and goes to yes. confront him. And she's like, oh, he said these horrible things to me. He threatened <laughs> to, like, tie me up on my corset strings oh my and use a riding crop on me. And I was which, like, hit me up, literally. Uh, hit Christian, me daddy one like, more time. No, exactly. I was like, hang on. Hang on a second. He said, what now? <laughs> and you were horrified? Because that would, would not be my response. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like. I would have been like, call us a carriage. We are getting out of here. Um, and I did think it was funny that uh because <laughs> does it is his name Henry? I'm blanking. Ye- um, I believe it's Henry or Harry. I think it's Henry. Ha- I think Henry's it's Henry. than Harry. Because isn't he like <laughs> he has to be like, well, you Henry. know, Margot, some people have <laughs> different sexual preferences. <laughs> And then also and she, she like so briefly scared. fantasizes about him spanking her because she's like, mm-hmm. wait, hang on. If he... Henry's doing it, maybe it's kind of hot, <laughs> queen. And I mean, frankly, that picnic scene was a feast and a half. It was. I. It was it really also was. like the the two sisters are like scandalous. They've kind of like half earned, half just kind of like fallen into these reputations. Um, and so you've got Margot, who the hero. Um, was first enamored when she was like tying a cherry stem with her tongue and you were not and then he's always like smelling cherries and he's like whoa he always wants cherries it's a whole thing Um, and then Matilda kind of like there, you get the whole kind of backstory about it in her book which was fascinating Um, I we don't need to I suppose go into that because it's a little bit of a spoiler and like we can let you figure that out but um, it was interesting to see how they both kind of approach the different um, scandalous pasts and then how Margot had a little bit harder of a time mm-hmm. wanting to let go of that than Matilda did. Um, and they were twins, so, like, the whole, you know, they look alike, but they're completely different people. And I thought the books conveyed that very well. Um, mm-hmm. They felt very different. Yeah. M- Margot's book was a lot shorter. And the Matilda's was longer. It had more of a plot. And um, it was a – I feel like it was a little more slow burn than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it was. Well, because – I think it was more than I expected just because when you're reading Mario's book, you think they're already yeah. eloping. Yes. Yeah, so – And so when you actually read it, you're like, oh, they're not eloping. Mm-hmm. This is slow So, burn. So I I was was like, what? Because, like, she – Matilda gives a whole speech in Margot's book about how she loves him and that she needs to, like, be free and, like, she loves him and they're going to go continue to Scotland. And then um, this means – she's just lying out her ass, her untattooed ass. And – Yeah. <laughs> and – so it's kind of like bittersweet when you read Margot's now because you're like, oh, she was like hoping, but it, like it wasn't happening yet. Um, so then like she gets to the house and then she's kind of just like befriending. Is it his sister? His is mm-hmm. it his daughter? Or his sister? I think it's his sister. His sister. Um, so it God, took a little bit. Memories. I it's been I read this seconds as I read this. It was a long. We were supposed to record and then we were like, wait, that's three episodes in a day, and we stopped. Everything's that. fine. Um. It's his sister. She's a hella good painter, which means yes, she even and she's really a very mean. dark painter. Yeah, <laughs> like, which I like, like angsty. Yeah. And Matilda was like, "I can't teach you anything. Can you teach me, Queen?" <laughs> so she just basically got lessons from the sister. She was just vibing in that house, mm-hmm. rearranging things yeah. and having sex in the library mm-hmm. as she should. Um, also, there's a cat. You know, I love a cat. Yes. I love a quirky animal. Also, it's named Angelica Kaufman, which made me that laugh. Was funny. It could have been Angelica Poffman. That wouldn't really work. I know, but paw. Yeah, but you're really stretching for the 
I mean, play here that wasn't. It's okay I mean, to you like off. tonsil tennis, so and you like tonsil <laughs> hockey. We're not I getting back sh- into this right now. It'll be another ten minute tangent. The cat, cat, the cat, the cat that yeah. gives birth on. I respect so much that this cat was dedicated to the cause. And by that, I mean she ensured with all of her power that there was only ever one bed available. Mm-hmm. She said, mm-hmm. oh, you have a bed to yourself? Not if I have anything to say I'm about go it. go give birth and on it. And for that, I salute Angelica Kaufman. <laughs> she was taking care of excess beds right and left. She'll do it for she, her country. I mean, someone take her to the chiropractor, right? <laughs> because she was carrying that on her back. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, she was an and MVP. pregnant all the while. She was so pregnant. She had many fluffy <laughs> she was babies. So pregnant, many fluffy babies. Um, I also just the actually maybe the most relatable part of this entire book was the um, sister whose name I'm forgetting being upset and disappearing. Um, yes, and they search and search for her for like an entire day. They cannot find her. When they finally find her, she is in the library, which is all like a maze of chaos right now because all this furniture that uh, <laughs> Matilda wants to get rid of is in there, whatever. Um, and she's sitting there with the kittens on her, like hanging out with the cat and the kittens. And she's like, Matilda's, but like we've been looking for you. Like we've been calling your name. We've been searching for you. And she's like, Yeah, I just I came heard. in here to like calm down, and I heard you guys. But the the kittens were on me. Like Angelica put the I I, I think the cat like put the kittens on her. Yeah, and the and cat like, like went to sleep, and then yeah. And I have never related to anything more in my life than somebody <laughs> being like, "I'm so sorry, I know, but there were kittens sleeping on me, so I wasn't gonna move." Well, because because she had walked in, so she i can't remember if it was like the housekeeper or someone and the sister had like knocked on the door and they were like obviously sharing a room because one bed um and they had just you know gotten into it in the sexual manner the night before and she slept in so she wasn't able to go back to her room and then he was just like come in and she was like ah excuse me and then immediately like the sister and whoever was with her came in and then the sister was not prepared for him to have romantic relations with anyone because it was there was like a backstory that I, of course don't remember um but I think it was more about that like he brought her there to like yes be a for him so, instructor so she thought yeah. that she was she thought there it was her, her friend yeah she thought that she was becoming was her like, friend yeah you're right oh you were only ever here for or like you she was only here for yep. him not you're using me for me. just yeah which was which sad she, but also she came back from that pretty yeah. quickly and well because like, she was just with cats because you think well, she's being yeah. super dramatic and then she's just sitting with cats. Yeah, she was just hanging out with kittens, which me too, queen. Yeah. Um, so um, it doesn't take up too much of the story. Mm-hmm. But but I, but I did Meanwhile, love how he was just like, come in. We're stuck on the uh, – where are they? They're in the, the very dramatic water uh, – I don't know where that is. It's I, like a beach or a river or something and he's stuck in the marshy tides. I don't huh. really know. I just know he gets stuck and – or the horse is stuck, and the oh. horse can't get out, and he doesn't want to leave the horse. Yeah, is it? And there's a very well, there's the cliff. Moment. Did his first wife? Was there a cliff? Did she fall off a cliff? I don't know. Fifty fifty memory on the cliff. gone. See, and this is another. If you were, if you listen to the Valentine's Day episode, you know we don't remember external plot. If there's a mystery. No, no idea. No. There's there's a spy mission, not a clue because, what that was. But, but I think boy, she, can I, I think, tell you about the sex scenes. I think one of them. Well, yeah, I make note. Face sitting, you got it. I will tell you. I will always tell you. Mysterious deaths. I, you know, like I think she fell off. The of, I think cliff. it was the cliff. Because then one of them almost fell off the cliff, and then he like pull her back. I, this could be. A I totally don't remember different that. Book. I don't think that's the case. There have I been remember many... him going to check at the cliff to yeah. see if his sister had fallen and being really worried that he would see her. I thought he almost fell off because the horse. I don't know. I don't truly. Think so. I've read a lot of but books. Maybe. Cliffs, there, yeah, cliffs are a great. They're a, they're a setting in historical kind Even of. Even Jane Austen appreciated a good mm-hmm. cliff. The moors, the cliffs. Um, Something with cliffs. Um, cliff hanger, cliff notes. Um, so then, yeah, you, Only I forgot. Bob, Cliff. 
Um, I can't. What? No. Oh, okay. Home Alone. No, it's too. it's Home Alone. But like, I was trying to remember the rest of the quote, but it's just like, oh, I love you, little Mo with the gimpy leg. You've been smooching with everybody. It's a lie. <laughs> okay. Um, um, for you, no, Home Alone. I, I instantly, I instantly knew the movie. I was trying Thank to get you. the rest of the That's quote. Good. It did not. I did don't not remember the order. I always, I always down. quote, "It's fish." Do you smell that, Mav? It's freedom. No, it's fish. It's and fish. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. and he's like, no, it's fish. Yeah. So that's my anyway come along quote of choice. Because <laughs> <laughs> you asked, obviously, listener. Yes. You. Yeah. Um. We didn't talk about Margot much. We got no. stuck on Matilda because I love Matilda. Yeah. Um. Oh, we- I did want to say re the 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 how many times am I gonna say the while I'm buffering? Um, Ooh, she's currently buffering. Uh, the, oh, the the, the outdoor scene, the oh. the scene that we get from both their perspective, the outdoor yes. scene. We were talking about how like the twins are very different; their books mm. feel very mm-hmm. different. They each had a different approach to the like scandalous reputation thing. I also really respect that we were able to get a conflict. From mm-hmm. each perspective, where neither of them was like in the wrong. Yeah, it wasn't like somebody did. I mean, each of them had like done smaller mm-hmm. things, but like I, I understood where each of them was coming from. Yeah, in that like Margot didn't really want this reputation that they had earned versus, I mean, Matilda. Didn't Matilda, yeah. Margot was like really leaning into it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I, I like the depth that was able to be like conveyed in mm-hmm. that. Like that you're getting at, and just like the reason for it, like we hadn't known in Margot's book, um, because right. she, because Margot didn't know, so Margot mm-hmm. doesn't know how that all began, or she doesn't, she doesn't really have a clue, and then Matilda, um, knows, and right. it's funny because then Margot is the one who leans heavily into it, and then Matilda was kind of like there. I mean, they were both scandalous in their own right. right. Um, I was was Matilda a virgin? No, no, we don't really know- get it. In- I don't remember getting into like the backstory of like how, but I think it's mm-hmm. mentioned she's had like a couple of lovers. A couple, so same thing with Margot, which was also nice. Um, I which, think heavy asterisk on that. I I could sure. be dead wrong. Yeah. Um, in Margot's books, so we mentioned it's a virgin hero, which I always prefer virgin hero. Um, and experienced woman rather than virgin virgin it's it's worked obviously like the duke who did it by courtney milan they're both virgins um there's like a few eloisa james they're both virgins um like it works sometimes but normally like that it's not the the sex lessons really that like you want um when you get the one virgin and normally like the virgin hero really like leans into like wanting to know um and like there, there's like one where he like reads erotic books because he's trying to practice. I think it's like a Megan Frampton book. Okay, uh, they're always so good. eager to please. He was so eager, um, and that's just what I love. Like I love like the just no pretenses. Like they're they're a little nervous. They're a little like shy about it. See, I like a virgin hero because like nine times out of ten, at least in a historical, but also probably in contemporary, mm-hmm. they're still a virgin only because they've been pining for the heroine yeah. for however many yeah. years. There, and they there are, never wanted to do it with anyone else. Her cough, lessons in Grantham. Yeah. Oh. oh my god. I love by design. And then you have sex on an architectural um whatchamacallit mm-hmm. desk. You that know, the, I mean like a drafting desk. To to opine on Virgin Heroes, that one specifically, just for a sec. He didn't know how to use birth control and she got okay. so angry because she thought he wasn't prepared and she she was like, How could you not like think about me? Like, you don't know. And he's like, I'm sorry. I don't know. And then she left and he was sad. And then they figured it out. And it was so good. Because mm. they were. And then he pulled up with all the birth controls. All of it. And let me tell you, there was another book, but Inserting of the Sponge, shit's hot. It is. There was another I one where they did it. I find historical birth hot. control fascinating. Mm-hmm. I think it's so fun every time the author is like, let's get into the weeds of this. And I'm like, yes, let's, tell let's me tie all about some rib- it. <laughs> let's tie some ribbons because that's sexy. And I saw one book was like talking about like the different color ribbons. They're like, let's do a pink one this time. I like that. I like, yeah. That would be me. I would do a pink one. I like the dentist. I will always ask for a pink toothbrush no matter how old I get. I would also ask for pink condom ribbons. <laughs> like... Leopards yeah. don't change their spots. Mine are hot pink. 
Um, um, speaking of historical birth control and the outdoor scene in Margot mm, Halifax, mm. not only is it pull out, which like, of course it is because, you know, it's a historical, mm. of course they're pulling out. <laughs> it's a thigh fucking situation at the end. He just pushes them together. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and my voice went that high. <laughs> a falsetto child. Um, like, it sounded it like was Pinocchio. Just- <laughs> Like a little Victorian boy. Oh! <laughs> I don't wear ladies' underwear. Um, uh. <laughs> it's a thong! <laughs> I just love that movie. Put a dollar in the Shrek jar. <laughs> I want to do a whole episode on Shrek, too, because that movie it's is not fantastic. Relevant to this podcast. <laughs> it's historical. It's medieval. It's fantastic, okay? I would write an essay so fast. I want just you to oh, write a dissertation on Shrek 2 being a historical romance. <laughs> I will. I just, I once, I wasn't, like, I wasn't under the influence of any drugs or anything. I was just, like, sitting in my bed thinking about how fascinating <laughs> and smart <laughs> the Shrek franchise was. I was just thinking how they went from Shrek 1, which was, like, vague fairy tale things, and they just, like, really went into it. I love, man, I love it. And Smash Mouth that song i mean the shrek soundtracks yeah bangers um um um, 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 so yeah the outdoor scene so like the what was lovely was that they stumbled upon this picnic because they heard that a woman who looked like Margot was in this town at this inn they had just went out with these special buns that she liked or whatever and they're like it's her um so they walked out and they found this like empty picnic site and they were like let's this isn't sketchy let's just sit down here and have a quick bang um so they just start fucking on this like picnic blanket and no. then little do they no 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 they... it's not on their picnic blanket they wander well, off in okay. different directions looking for them and then they converge in the woods do they and then they i guess are still do, horny. Do, they, do they like eat their picnic <laughs> no they just find it and are like aha they've been here they must be in the area i felt like I don't know. You remember better than I do. I'm diverting to you. I'm pretty um, sure. Sure. I I agree. Oh, um, I'm so sorry to Alexandra Vasti if you're listening to this and you're like, so- why are you guys butchering my novellas? Well, you're also your in the best. midst of, sadly, in the midst of tonsil stuff. and that, that You're sadly in the midst of tonsil <laughs> phrases that shouldn't be uttered. Um. Uh, yeah. However, I will this. say, can we remember what happened with the picnic blanket? Except that I'm pretty sure they just found it and then wandered off into the woods. No, but can I remember that he pulls out and immediately starts fucking her thighs? Yes, I can. <laughs> so, what the I details remember, that like, I remember <laughs> are her specific. head is like sm- her head is like smashed, in smashed the, into the, the dirt. Ground. There's which, twigs in her hair. And which hair for me, mouth. that's a little scary. Like I don't like dirt. I don't like being dirty. Um, yeah, but it's, so that it's was a, so in the moment. It was that. Well, that's also why I love the bear. Um, next to the in the bear, the bear hole, bear in the hole. Sure, the bear one bear, bear, a yes. bear in the hole is worth two in the bar. I mean, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> bear in a hole, by the way, sounds like either a delicious breakfast treat or a really filthy fucking euphemism. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> Both. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna become a baker, and I'm gonna make bear holes, bear in the holes, and it's like gonna donut be hole. like a it's like, really it's horrific. A... You know those like erotic pastries that Lizzie oh Blake makes, and Lizzie yeah. Blake's best mistake. It's gonna be that, and you're gonna call it bear in a hole. It's gonna be a mix of bear bear claws and donut holes, you and egg in argue... egg in the hole. So you know how there's like a certain type of gay man that are called bears. No, you know, like there's twinks. And yeah, I do know that. I did not well, know there was a the bear. big burly ones. Oh, knowledge. Well, that would I, make not sense. that I'm an expert on queer culture, but I'm, they're bears. Um, I had a an instructor, like a, you know, grad students teach classes yeah. in college. Um, I had an instructor who I adored. He was what a guy. He brought up shout, um, out, shout out, shout out to Christian because he yes. brought up cool name. Um. Oh, what is the show that I'm Grey's Anatomy? I swear mm-hmm. to God, every single class. Um, I remember walking in one day and we were just blasting Total Eclipse of the Heart on the projector, mm-hmm. and I was like, sure. Um, but he specifically, we came back from spring break and he was like, I had a really great spring break. Um, went to Big Bend National Park, saw a lot of bears, 
um, the gay kind and the animal kind. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, bear in a hole. A, a bear is a gay man. Do you see where I'm going with this as being a euphemism? Yes. I feel well, like it could anything be with one. a hole. Anything with a hole, I sure, do. but like specifically with a bear. A bear that is that is quite funny. <laughs> I feel like this euphemism should already exist if it doesn't. We've stumbled upon something. We have the world, perhaps, isn't ready. Anal. It's just anal. <laughs> it's just it's just anal. <laughs> <laughs> she says forlornly. Uh, once again, this is not relevant to the topic of the episode. No. How did we go from dinosaur Be- because <laughs> we oh, so we are unhinged, but we have a purpose. And we can always find six degrees. Not always <laughs> is it the Nicolas Cage, but we've gotten there just now for other six degrees. So six degrees of like mud dirt pushing down in the, the elements. It's fucking. just outdoor sex to outdoor sex. And I immediately Kate equate Bateman. I, I immediately equate that with A Daring Pursuit by Kate Bateman where they're caught up in the moment and there's a gigantic bear in a gigantic hole and they succeed in putting the bear in the that hole. It sounds so dirty every time we say it. I, I know. And then they just go for it on hands and knees right next to this bear. And the bear's probably they're like not growling. In the hole. The bear is no, in they're pit. outside the hole. They're, they're above. The and then it just gets to where they're like, we almost died. We gotta, we gotta make love and make life, because yeah. Death. Versus Margot Halifax, which is not a danger bang, but it is no. a frantic outdoor bang. And then like, you drive me insane. And then she's like, "That's hot." It was Margot. It was. And then um, the Matilda and whatever his name was, this Christian. Christian, they stumble upon those two going at it like bears and then matilda's like christian just go we're gonna we're gonna wait for them to do what they're doing and i'm gonna go give her a talking to i mean can you imagine stumbling upon your twin with a with a family friend (laughs) and you're like what i like the even she's like i have she like makes a comment about how like buttoned up henry is and how (laughs) starchy he is and she's like wow didn't see that one coming. I loved it. But I did I see that. him coming. <laughs> Dang it, where's my remote? I don't know where your effects remote is, but put in a little bit for me. I sure will. I have it saved. Add it in post. Um <laughs> it sounds so professional. Add it in post. Um What was that? Yes. Unhinged. I would rather die than see my siblings in yes coitus. in reality horrible situation for the drama of it it was hilarious because then you've got the whole she gives her whole love speech matilda about how she loves christian and then in their book she's like oh this hurts because it's not true i'm just going to be his painter and then and then they collect a cat as you do they collect a cat and then mul- yeah, and along then the, the cat- way. And she's like a vicious, like she's a miscreant. Yeah. She fucks up their lives, but for good. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. she really is out here to get them to just make the beast with two backs already. She's like, get on this. She's like, oh, you want to bathe me? That's a funny joke. How about you go get dick down instead? <laughs> As you do. As you do when you're a cat. The, she's the, pregnant. The cat- the cat bathing to getting dick down pipeline. <laughs> I <Yeah>. mean, <laughs> happens to the best of us. Well, because I was like, surely we're not going to make this entire journey with no one bed situation, right? Yeah. Surely not. <laughs> I've read enough romance to know. This mm-hmm. cannot possibly be what we're doing. So she was like, hang on, I'm going to bathe this cat. And I was like, oh, ho, ho, this is going to go so horribly wrong. And then it did. Do they, they – they don't have sex on the way there, do they? They just – No. There's some – They have been so cuddling. horny this whole time yeah. fantasizing about each other. And then they get there and then she tries to bathe the cat and the cat scratches her and knocks her backwards. And Christian has to pry the cat off her face. Mm. Not a euphemism. Hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Was there face sitting in this? There should have been. And then I our new euphemism – Yeah, prying the cat off his face. That's our I, new – I don't – 
think there. I don't think there was. I would have. I would have. I yeah, would I feel knowing like you me that I would remember it. that. Yeah. Um, I can go look at my notes. There. No, I don't think so. I think it's just the because we get a little lazy. Anyway, he's like, go put on some clothes that aren't completely see through because of water. Again, that's and also a hot I will, situation. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I will treat the scratches on your like neck or whatever. And he does also hot. Um, mm-hmm. love a caring mm-hmm. for an injury scene. Um, and then they're like just groping each other as you do. And she's naked under the robe, and she's like doing a little shoulder tease. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna lose my mind. And then he does. Oh, but then he does oh, that classic shoulder. historical romance hero thing that I love, where he's like, I can't like have set like i can't either i can't ruin her or i can't like fully take mm-hmm. her or whatever it is um but i can get her off yeah god i love that trope so he does also he doesn't he spank her at this point he like grabs her by the back of the neck spanks her for a while and then eats her out from behind <laughs> king <laughs> and Again, then that's it the, <laughs> the, the pipeline <laughs> i'm like sorry you dropped this your crown um <laughs> and there was a and then they they have sex for the first time in the well it's a good girl but it's a do you do you want to be a good girl Mm -hmm. yeah because she says no because in Margot's, it was all about her not wanting to be a good girl um and um at some point she was just like yeah i'm not and then they were fucking in the woods (laughs) so yeah big fan of by the way um i i want to be wicked but i want you to make me be good yes Yes. Absolute banger. Yeah, that one that one really Lame worked. emojis. And um, had, like, both going on for it. Also, I respect that the first time they, like, had penetrative sex was just against the library shelves. They were just, just so be. horny. Just And then we got bonded later shelves. with the ribbon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I wanted a little bit more. There was a, the writing again. Check off saddle strap. Strikes get- again. Whatever that writing crop, I was good with it. I mean, I would have, I, I would read yeah. it. If she yeah. was like, "Here's a bonus I, of all of him." Tying I was gonna say, I wonder if there's gonna be strings and using a writing crop. I'll take it. like a like a newsletter, like extended scene or something. Yes, I'll read it. She Every will, time. she will read. I'll it. eat it up. Um, from behind. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dang it, I need my remote. Add it in post. Uh, <laughs> it's a real you have to say it in that specific voice for it Add to work. Post. Thank you. Um like like a real professional. Um <laughs> That's us. Real professionals. This yeah, is our I would have loved some face. Was there face sitting in uh Margo? No. I only have I, – I have Virgin Hero marked off for that, and then I have um, – fam- And there's that I have- classic, we're stuck in a cottage yeah, in the rain. I, we have The work that cottages do. The work that cottages the do for us. they do. The cottage in – that one in historical romance generally <sighs> and Angelica Kaufman in Matilda. Mm. I just – because there's all – because they always – or, like, maybe I can't remember if the college was, like, in this situation, but um, in one of, like, the novellas in the Duke in a Box anthology, and, like, a lot of times they, like, wander off, and someone make, makes reference in the morning that it's going to storm, and neither of them, like, heed it. So then one's just, like, wandering off. And was then, it Darcy Burke? Was it that one? Uh, it's probably that one. There, there are, like, a few different books that have this, but it was probably – I think it was the Darcy Burke one because then they both – that was the two younger ones um, who were, like, enemies. Yeah. And then they end up – she like storms off. She's trying to lead him astray. <laughs> She's like, I'm just gonna They're leave you for so dead. Lost. She's like, I'm gonna leave him lost in the woods. LOL. But then like her trail didn't work. Um, I mean, me, like, you could lead me astray and I would die. I mean, that would be a death sentence for me. I would not find I wouldn't find a cottage. I wouldn't find anything. I would die right there. I mean, so honestly, she didn't and he's terrible at directions. So she didn't realize that. So he could have legit perished. Um <laughs> <laughs> and so she's like trying to lead him astray and then it's like getting snowy and dangerous levels sure. and so then they she like catches up they like find each other and they find this cottage and then they have sex and i really love loved that one um but i just love how there's always like the talk of like the impending storm and then it always comes to pass 
once again, um, really carrying historical romance yeah. on its back. Um, speaking of characters that carry things on their back, the housekeeper in Matilda deserves a <laughs> shout out. She shout really out to does. housekeeper. Because not because you know what? I should say this. Angelica Kaufman did half the work in giving birth on <laughs> Matilda's bed. She did her part and then she passed the baton. She mm-hmm. said, my part, check that relay. box. Now it's on you. And the housekeeper said, I got you. Thank you for your service, Angelica. I will take it from here. Oh, no, Matilda, you can't sleep in that room anymore. Here's this room directly across the hall from Christian. I love Shout it. Shout out to her. I just, you just don't get this vibe in contemporary. No. I mean. Contemporary just, has its own It does. It does. It its own genre conventions. But you gotta, but, like, it just feels so much better to have something a little kooky and a historical. Uh, I, I'm just, like, remembering all the different, like, hallway escapade, like, walking and, oh, uh, my God. Well, also, especially because, like, I feel like in a contemporary, if a cat gives birth on your bed. I mean, you could argue that, like, they don't want to move it because, like, the kittens are there. Yeah. But, like, honestly, you could just give them a little nest and, like, pop the sheets in the washer Mm -hmm. and you're good i also we also have like a ton of unsexy air mattresses they would all like we got so many and i would love to see actually a sex scene that involves an air mattress i think that would be hilarious they could pop it so one of our air mattresses air mattresses at our cabin one of the like the you know how it's like kind of quilted so it has like the ridges like ruffles Mm -hmm. and then like the seam in the middle well one Mm -hmm. of them like popped so it's like a huge hump that would be fun for a sex scene. It would create some fun acrobatics. No, I just think it could make for some hilarious. You get that? You can yeah. have them like fully popping it. Like it would that would be humorous to me. And then you're just like slowly sinking. It's like deflating. Slowly deflating <laughs> while you're having sex would be funny to me. Um, any of the – you know how it, it's like – it's plastic. So it's like super creaky and loud anytime you try to like move on it. So having sex on one of those things must just be like – And like you – horrendous. But also it would be perfect for the unintentional cuddling middle of the night because you always move towards the center. Oh, classic. Like – everyone like rolls because the air is just like depressing that way um i don't i don't think there was an air mattress but because there was no power but in um kiss her once for me by allison conkren there was a great cottage scene because they were they were in the middle of a snowstorm that they did not think was gonna be that bad cottages in (laughs) storms and severe snowstorms they do it like the best of us um so they got stuck outside of it they had a break in it was their neighbors they had to like steal their clothes because they had no clothes and they were all wet and then they banged and it was great that was a great book did you read that one this year uh i started it but i never finished it next year it's gonna be great for you the audiobook was really nice i loved it um i'm trying to think if i have anything else to say other than just these novellas are really great and i love yeah. them yeah and I can't wait to see what she writes next. But also, now I kind of want to reread Matilda Halifax. And I'm feeling Margot. So. I love that for us. We are who we are. You know, it's um, funny. I'm not an age gap person. That was the neither. one thing that I was like a little wary about. I was like, mm, age gap, not my vibe. It, it wasn't like a huge deal mm-hmm. in the book. It, I think it barely came up, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it worked. Have you finished Harper St. George's book yet for your book club? No. Um, the second one in that series has a pretty substantial age gap. She's like 19 and he's 30. But Ooh. that book is so good, though. It, I, it. I didn't think it would hit. It's my favorite of the series. And sweet baby Jesus and the grown one, too. Like, literally, mm, Chris, his name is Christian, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like an undercover like romance writer and she's like writing him into all of her sex Maybe scenes. we're all secretly writing <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey fan fiction. Honestly. But yeah. I I don't got much else. Ale- her Alexandra Vasti is is it with S and P? Um St. Martin's I Press think is so. her series. I th- I think so. I don't think it's source books. Um she's coming out with like she has like a three book deal. And the first one I think is coming out in twenty twenty four, I think. Um Super excited. I was super surprised. I was like, oh my god. That's cool. Um, she almost didn't release. She almost wasn't able to release uh, Matilda. Why? Because of like, the no 
because of the no compete or whatever, um, she couldn't sell it. So that's why it was free. It was supposed to be probably on Kindle Unlimited or at least Kindle. Um, but due to her contract, which must have been signed, which was weird because she was like teasing it. So I think it, she must have just signed the contract when all this was happening, like her release, because then she was like pivoting to free again in the, in the newsletter because they wouldn't let me make money from anything else, but I could do it for free. So I was like, whoa. Did not know that, but thank God. That would have really sucked. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how any of that works. Me neither. It must be – it could just be, like, specific to their, like, house or something. Um, Because I would would think – Well, because there's other, like – what do you you call that? Like, joint – the authors that do both? Like, anthologies and stuff, yeah. Yeah, I don't – Like, Kennedy Ryan does independent publishing Mm -hmm. and traditional. It must be something in their contract that's, like, you can't – but it's so weird. I don't know. Not a clue. But we almost didn't get it, but we got it. And um, thank God. The, was it the devil works funny. hard, but romance writers work harder? Well, that is true. Or the that devil works do. hard. The devil works hard, and romance heroes get harder. Um. Thank you. Oh. And good night. Add a dollar to the. The horrible the jar, jar where you jar. hurt me. <laughs> the pain jar. I've got a lot of jars. Not even the good kind. <laughs> Are there good jars? Oh, not the good. I was like, they're good jars. The good pain. I get it. <laughs> I got it, guys. Don't worry. Uh, we got there. Um, yeah, we did that. We did. So. <sighs> We have a wonderful, very exciting uh, guest that we are so excited to have on with us today. So, Alexandra, do you want to say hello? Hello. Hi, I'm Alexandra Vasti. Um, I am the author of the Halifax Hellions novellas, which are free through my newsletter. The third one will be coming out sometime in the next <laughs> couple months. Ah. Uh, and my debut novel is coming out next year. Probably in May, we're inching toward having a release date. Um, it's called Ne'er Duke Well, and it's coming out with St. Martin's Press. Oh, so oh. exciting. I mean, we are big fans of the uh, the Halifax Hellions. Mm-hmm. We did a whole episode. So you, you can go back and listen to that episode if you didn't, listeners, and then go read the books. Or probably read them first. Read the novellas, yeah. sign up for the newsletter, then go listen to the episode. Uh, uh, perfect. You've because. you've taken Bookstagram by storm with those. You have. It's I have amazing. been really just super lucky and super grateful. People have been so nice and kind to share them, and it's been really fun to. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever put you know my my creative my romance out there. So it's been really cool, and I feel very grateful. Yeah, I mean, I would love to hear a little bit about like. I assume you've been reading historical mm-hmm. romance or romance generally for. A while, a I long think. time. A um, so time I would long. love to hear about like when you started, like what got you mm-hmm. into writing. Is it something yeah. you've been doing for years and just now started publishing? Like, what's what's yes. the backstory? Yes, and yes, um, yeah. So I started reading romance when I was eleven. Wow. Um, my first ro- <laughs> my first romance was Whitney, my love. Oh, wow, I think you guys. Are yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, I my reaction was both like, what did I just read? But also, is there more? Yeah. <laughs> Still, please, please let there be more. <laughs> so uh, that's my romance origin. You story. jumped into the deep um, end. Yeah, I did. I and you know what? My mother gave me that book. She was like, "Here, I think you'll like this one." And you know what? I did. She was not wrong. <laughs> like she was right. Was it questionable? Maybe, but it was right. <laughs> <laughs> but she was not incorrect at all. Yes, she's a big romance reader. Um, my grandmother, actually, both of my grandmothers are, are big romance oh, readers, so although one is more spicy mm. in her tastes than the other. <laughs> so only one of my grandmothers is allowed to read my books. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I started reading romance, and I pretty much just never stopped. Um, obviously, my first romance was historical romance with Whitney, my love, and I've just always loved historical romance. Um, so that's what... I write. I've been writing forever. Um, my first, like, I wrote my first romance uh, novella when I was 14, and it was, like, a romantic suspense. Basically, I wrote a lot of, like, Nora Roberts fan fiction, <laughs> sure. I would say. <laughs> like, there was always an inn. There were, like, three brothers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been writing romance for a long time, um, but it wasn't until after I finished my PhD in 2019 that I felt like I kind of had the, the skills that I wanted to write historical romance, mm-hmm. which is my my first and abiding love. 
Um, so yeah, so 2019 was when I started writing historical romance. Um, and Ne'er Do Well was the first romance that I decided to try to get an agent um, and sell. And it, I was very lucky it happened really fast, much faster than I was expecting. So I actually wrote that book first. And then just publishing is so slow. Like I sold the book in November and I wasn't mm-hmm. even allowed to announce it until like February. So it was just like this long mm-hmm. gap of like, what do I do? You know, I was, I, so I, I wrote these novellas actually after Ne'er Do Well. Um, oh. and have been releasing them. Yeah. Oh, so that's fascinating. There's like actually, they were inspired by like a completely random one-off line in Ne'er Do Well where the main character is talking about um, like unsuitable debutantes and she's like well you know those Halifax twins are like terrible Uh, and I and I sort of like I I love them actually (laughs) I love those terrible twins how do I tell their stories uh so that's where the idea for the novella it's very it's giving me like Lisa Kleypas vibes where you get like a mention of a character and it's like oh they're they're that's their book they're a part of a whole series I love I love (laughs) picking up easter eggs in romance novels where they're, they're all interconnected I eat it up so now I'm going to be Good. reading Ne'er Duke Well, like looking for the, looking, looking for, for the, the line, line. <laughs> looking for the Halifax. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we just got like some crazy insider information, knowing that you know. wrote them after Ne'er Duke Well. Like that's so- it makes yeah. sense to me. Like yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, like uh-huh. publishing kicking as long as it does, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, duh. I just didn't think mm-hmm. about it, but I love that. I'm very excited for that. And Thank for you. Winnie. Well, yeah, the line is in there. <laughs> you will see it. Oh, yeah, and Winnie. I'm really excited. So for anyone who hasn't read the novellas, um, the first two novellas are about a set of Hellion twins who go rogue <laughs> and go on a on this sort of just a wild adventure. And the two novellas happen um, at the same time. They're both road trip romances um, as one twin goes off to elope and the other twin goes off to stop her twin from <laughs> eloping. Um, and... So they have an older brother who's sort of referenced in passing uh, several times. And they can say, oh, he's in Wales. Oh, he's in Wales. <laughs> um, so when I decided to write um, a novella for the brother, I was like, well, what's he up to in Wales? So actually, all three of the novellas are simultaneous. I love um, that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but at the same time, um, it was it was so much torture trying to do it with the second novella that I decided to do it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, well, that was what's awful. Your, was do you have like a time. timeline map somewhere? Oh, my God. Is it, it is ridiculous. <laughs> it is so and and it's it's too much and like I'm positive no one is going to Google like what day of the week was September 28th 1821. But if you do, if you were to, it would be correct it as is. it should be. Yeah. That's the level of research we need. <laughs> I feel like people do though. Like they do want that level of detail, and someone will notice. Yes. Well, I, I have a calendar down to the day. It's like October 12th, monkey. <laughs> Oh, you haven't read the monkey yet. It's in the I'm ready. October twelfth, monkey. monkey. Putting it on my calendar <laughs> now. Just monkey. <laughs> so yeah, no other note. Just monkey. 